Hi, welcome to um, the journey with me, Fonti. And today I'm speaking with one of the most talented young men in the community. You need to know about Andrew. You know, he's a graduate of um, Warwick. He read economics and went into the banking industry with RBS for many years. You know, he, he climbed the career, the ladder, and at some point, for some reason, I don't know, he left this flying career to start his own business. And that's what we're going to talk about today in the journey. Oh, cool, thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much for having me. Thank you. So, Andrew, tell me about, um, I'd like to know why you switched career. Yeah, so, no, that, that's a very, very interesting question. And what a lot of people ask me, like, you know, why did I leave banking? Um, so I've been doing banking for five years and I really loved it and enjoyed it. But my passion had always been business. So, to be honest, God really helped me was that in that last few months my mind wasn't even on banking and um, I got fired so you know you can imagine that day you come into work and then they call you to a room and they say you know what um, like this is your last day with us and obviously I was devastated but if I didn't have that push I wouldn't have got into the business of you know TV so it was like you know it was a it was a, it was a disguise and it was a blessing in disguise that helped me move from banking to TV. So it was actually like, let's say, a disappointment that brought you into disappointment? Yeah, yeah. Or a disappointment that brought me into success. So or maybe my dreams. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's what it was, but yeah. But with, but with, my, with my production partner, Deborah, I'd been funding it on the side before I left banking anyway. Okay. But, you know, that me being fired or being made redundant was that that was the impetus for me to say let me move and fully okay grow before we business. go in, before we go into the actual business you mm. going into the business and everything mm. i'd like to know your days in the banking mm. you know how was it how were you going now you know what, yeah what no, no banking was really good i mean i was um i was a trader so i was working in in the city and i worked in the city for three years and i worked in new york for two years okay so that that was good it allowed me to travel the world meet new people expand my experiences and just open my eyes to a lot of opportunities in okay. life yeah and you studied economics in yeah. school yeah. yeah at uh, warwick at warwick yeah. yeah so what's the experience from warwick and this what how did warwick prepare you enough for yeah no it was banking? like it was fantastic you know warwick is, a, is one of the top universities in the uk okay. and um just being there the opportunities doing the degree meeting like-minded people helped me in terms of networking and even to this day some of our early investors in in the company was people that i went to university with in warwick okay. so that having that you know connection and networking helped me to this day yeah. okay now i read somewhere that um while you were in school maybe um level a or something I don't okay, know. Yeah. yeah yeah some of your teachers didn't really quite believe in you okay, how yeah, did yeah. You, you know how did you make it into warwick how did you make it to rbs how you know and you're still you know going yeah i mean like to be honest it's the as you know like you know in the in the nigerian community that like, you have to thank god for your parents so it was mainly my parents that were driving me not to believe what the teachers predicted so I was predicted lower grades than what I was at the end able to achieve. And my parents were the ones that told me to like, you know, focus and not to listen to Do you to mind what telling anyone. me what the prediction were? Oh, the prediction, well, they were okay. Like the prediction was like, I think two B's and a C. And my parents were like, no, you can get like um, all A's if you push yourself. Like don't just settle on two B's and a C. And two B's and a C is quite good. You know, I'm not gonna like, you know, say that 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 is a bad grade but my parents were like don't worry push like move forward like you can keep going so that like, what happened is i rejected all my university offers that was for two b's and a c and decided just to focus on the studies and see how high i could get wow now you know um i also found out when we are researching about you we found out that also that um you know you wanted to be go to a university that will prepare you for the kind of job that you want yeah 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 so yeah and i mean absolutely and i think that's what a lot of people maybe they make the mistake sometimes people just go to university for the sake of going to university but you know you i always wanted to go into finance and um i decided which universities were the best for finance so they were like universities like lsc ucl 
um, Cambridge, Oxford, Warwick. So that was why I decided to go into into Warwick, and you know, thank God I was able to get in. Yeah. Now, what then going into RBS? I know that um, you know uh, most black people think you know will say it's not easy for you to get in there. How do you, how was your how long was your leg to get into RBS? At um, that stage? like you know, like I said, like you know. It was it was just through the grace of God really. As soon as I finished university, I started with them maybe like three months afterwards. So like God helped me that in my second year of university I was able to do like a ten week internship. And that's why I would always stress to people to get as much experience in university as possible because that helps. Nowadays with so many people going to university you need to have work experience before you finish and that helps your C V and stuff. Okay. So I was able to through that internship, secure an offer, and so as soon as I finish, then I can go into the, into the graduate the, okay. graduate job. Yeah. Now let's talk about business business mm. life. Media Avengers, mm. which is now becoming a kind of household name in you know you know in the TV, yeah, you know productions and mm. things like that. So mm. tell me about it. When, at what point, and did you know what you were going to create before? Um, no, we didn't. We didn't. So what happened is that, I, I, I can still remember it to this day, we was at, me and my business partner Deborah we was like at, in her flat. So I was thinking, what kind of ideas? You want to go into TV? What is not out there? So it was like, okay, you know, you know, there's no real African family, you know, like, you know, what kind of thing? So it was like, okay, let's create a family. Um, let's have like, you know, in-laws or, or relatives that always annoyed the father so we could always we, we kind of just figured it out and put it together but it was mainly trying to show a um a representation of a nigerian family uh, on tv which people can you know after a long day at work they can come home and relax and laugh with their kids and their families so that was the vision that we wanted to do as a family man with a mission to instill old-fashioned african values on his british household you will be a big money accountant i know pieces of yam that can get better results than this balance okay, wh wh why was it nigeria that was the focus why did you have to choose nigeria it was mainly nigerian because that me and deborah were nigerian you know so like our parents were nigerian we were nigerian so that was the easiest thing for us to take some experiences from people we know, uh, things that happen in our life. So it was easy for us to create that. You know, as we're going forward with the company, we're creating more different types of shows. So like, you know, more Pan-African shows from different places. But the first shows we wanted, we felt that doing a Nigerian show would be the easiest show for us to do. Okay. Now, the, 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 the business aspect of the, you know, setting up a production company, and you know something creative and all that so what were the things what were the you know the things you had to think about the mm -hmm. elements the mm -hmm. you know the factors that you had to determine first before going into the business the main thing was money and uh, and as you know you know in business that is the driver you know whether business fails and succeeds is you know the money that you know you can raise in the beginning and that was where you know being in finance and having the relationships with a lot of different people, I was able to raise a lot of money. So I think we raised about 100 to 150 thousand pounds to set up the company. And that was the driver that was allowed us to shoot the episodes and then go to Africa and try and sell them. So without that money in the beginning, it would have been very hard because you have to pay the staff, you have to pay the actors, you have to pay the, the camera crew, the studio. So without that money in the beginning, we wouldn't have been able to, to, do, to do it. Yeah. What are other challenges that you had to face mm -hmm. building this business? I mean, the, the key one was getting the cast right. You know, so we had so many people coming to audition. I think we, we auditioned like five days, 9 a.m. to like 7, 8, 7 p.m for five days straight, so, so many actors. But it was trying to find the right ones that, you know, people would connect to. So and I can remember the day when um, the, the actor Wale Ojo, who plays the dad, mm -hmm. when he first walked in, he came in with such a presence that me and Deborah were like, this is the guy, how do we get him? And the funny story with him was that he's actor, I mean, he's agent, who was, you know, like an international agency. They didn't want him to do it. So he had to battle with them to get their permission to do it. And in the end, I think he ended up 
maybe sacking his agent because he really wanted to, he saw this as a big opportunity and experience and um, a role that would, you know, benefit like the community and, you know, of deeper value than how his agent was feeling about it. So it was like getting that cast together and making sure that the right people, because if the cast is not correct, the audience watching won't be able to believe that these are family or Nigerian family. That was the hardest thing. Okay. How about the selling of the, the you know, getting the, the after shooting, um, mm. you know, the production is out. How how was it getting into the TV, making, you know, getting TV stations? To yeah, I mean, that was um, that was probably one of our first mistakes because what we did, we sold, we sh we produced it before we sold it. <laughs> what, what, if, what we should have done is sold it before we oh, produced it. Yeah. yeah. So that was our biggest, one of our biggest mistakes, and yeah. it was a lesson that we learned. So so we finished producing the show. And then, um, then we was like, okay, we spent all this money. How are we gonna get some money back, or how are we gonna get the show out there? And um, so we went to a conference, like a, a TV conference in Ghana. It was meeting the different um, TV stations across Africa, but the price they were offering us was a lot lower than what we thought <laughs> <laughs> we was gonna I get. Know, yeah. So it was like, oh my god, what have we done? You know, like how, like what type of you know, mistake have we done? How are we going to pay back the investors? That kind of thing. But then we realised that the best thing is to try and get as much distribution as possible. So, not to worry too much about the money, but get as many TV stations as possible. Then, for the new season, if the audience love it, then the demand will come back. Yeah. yeah so that was a big, you know, lesson learned. So gamble. It, took, it was a big gamble. Gamble. Yeah. And it took us. A, um, maybe two years yeah. of going around, so going to South Africa, went to Uganda, um, we saw it in Kenya, in um, in like Rwanda, all these different places that we're going, Nigeria, and just selling and selling and selling. So it was a lot of just jumping on the plane and just going there for the first time. Wow. What was the biggest lesson that you learned on the journey, on the process of what the production selling and you know, where you are now what what has been the biggest lesson you've mm. learned as a business as a business yeah um my biggest lesson is that you know things take longer than you expect okay because i remember when i was um raising money so i was telling my investors don't worry within 12 months you will double your money like money will come quick like this is going to be a big brand and one of my biggest investors actually told me is like no andrew i'm going to give you the money to and invest in your company but look I'm, I'm not expecting anything for three or four years because that's how long it typically takes but i will be very naive in business was like no 12 months it would take but then after 12 months after the struggles of selling and trying to build the business i realized that you know doing a business you have to be patient you know if you just if you're all about the money in the beginning you won't succeed because most businesses don't take it takes a long time to get the brand and people interested so, you know, that, that, that has been the biggest lesson, like patience mm -hmm. and understanding that, you know, things don't happen. Like Rome isn't built in a day, so you have to yeah. take your time to build up the foundation. Yeah, I, and also I found out that, um, you know, like when you started, just like you said now, you didn't really have relationships with mm. TV stations, you yeah. didn't know people, then you started building the mm. relationships. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it was simply a, um, a matter of, I would send like the YouTube link to a TV station, um, and most times they wouldn't call me back and then I will maybe like go online, find like the number of the TV station, call them. Um, in Nigeria, sometimes I just turned up. So I just went there, turned up with my like laptop, showed them the show and then from there was able to, to get some sales. You, 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 how many, you, you, you know, if you're counting, let's mm. say, I know it's uncountable, I've been there. Yeah. So if you're, let's say, if you want to count the the people, how many people who actually said no or snubbed you? Yeah. How encouraging was it for you um, as a beginner? Like it, it was, it was like you know, it was discouraging. I you know. know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah, don't yeah. want to be negative. It's, it's like it's discouraging, and I and I think that's what a lot of people probably don't t talk about is that you know, in business, it's the ups and downs, and sometimes the downs are much longer than the ups. You know, the ups may be like you know, one day, two days, but you can have like six months. Of rejections and rejections and rejections and rejections and that's in that period of time we went through different stages so in the beginning we was like let's try DVDs that worked but it wasn't bringing as much money as we wanted so then we were like okay let's go to theatre 
theatre was good, but theatres was so much effort. And even though we had, I think we did it in Catford Broadway, we did it in Hackney Empire, I think we had about 5,000 people come, which was very, very good. But the effort and the cost, paying everybody, again, we didn't make that much money there. And then we went back to, let's try and build a relationship with the TV stations. Okay. And then that was what allowed the show to, to, to grow. Survive, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. What, what, how far were you pushed in the challenges, in the, you know, in the struggle? How far were you both financially and otherwise? Uh, financially was tough. Financially was tough, you know. Um, the good thing, like I said, I was I came from banking, but you know, I literally spent all my all my savings. You know, probably for the first first three years, I didn't pay myself a salary. Yeah. So I was just working, 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 just getting by, getting by. Um, but again, these are the things that you know, in business, you have to do if you want to get like you know to survive in business. So you know, it's um, what I say is no regrets. Even though it was tough, and even though you know. I had, um, you know, a few trials and tribulations. Uh, what kept us going is, you know, when, when I would go to a church that I've never been to before, and then someone would run up and say, "Oh, you know, like my son or my daughter, I, I watched the show." That was encouraging to mean for us to mean that like, okay, people are watching it, so at least it's having impact, and that's what kept us going when times were tough. So, how, how does it feel now when you sit back? I know the struggle is still there, you know, because you, the business has to keep going and growing, you know, at the same time. So, when you look at, when you look back now from where you started, where you are now, and where you are going, how how does it feel? No, it feels good. It feels it feels like you know we, we've had a journey, but I think the journey has been good. You know, I mean, the amount of lessons that I learned through that journey, I couldn't have gone to any school, you know, any any MBA, any business school to learn those lessons. So I think, like the business is in a in a much stronger place, you know. Like you know, we have, I think about thirty nine different episodes of content. Like we have two TV shows, and we're launching another one this year as well. And the good thing is the demand from the TV stations in Africa and across the world for the show, and for the audiences allows it to cut, keep coming back. Okay. And obviously, you know, you, like every season you get paid more money, so the the value of it goes up. You know, so I think all in all, it's 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 been it's been a positive experience. I wouldn't change anything. Anything. Yeah. Okay. How did you were able to pick who to play what? Yeah. So um, in terms of the the mum, like you know, we we'd met her before, um, and so we was able to pick her for the mum, the dad. You know, the the hardest one to be honest was to find was Auntie Funke. <laughs> so we had a few different people, and but and it was the the dad. Uh, the Wale, the mm -hmm. actor, who, who suggested, like, oh, you know, I've got a friend, you know, called Mujib and Tefa, mm -hmm. and and her and her husband actually is quite, um, it's quite famous. Okay. I think he acted in um, what's this thing, House of Commotion or something oh, like House that. Of yeah. Fuji House of Commotion. Yeah, I know so it, I think yeah. his he, her, her husband name is Kunle okay. and Tefa. Okay. So, she, but so as soon as she came in and she performed, everyone was laughing so much that we were like, yeah, this is the right person to play. Yeah. To play the role, and every time everyone that comes to watch it live, she's the one that everyone laughs. She laughs, makes everyone laugh the most. Now the, the, the entire uh, meet up at the banjo, it, it is a hilarious, you know, movie, but you know, TV series. So, but behind that laughter and what message were you trying to convey? Um, the message was, you know, to it's like a, it's like an international and it's a local message. So for for people in the UK, mm. was that you know, there's a to show the message, there's a lot of families that are going through the same problems that you are going through but you know with good family values and you know with parents staying together and loving their kids that they can get through any problems and obstacles that was the kind of we were just trying to promote family values but even though you know funny things may happen yeah. but the family values that's what we were trying to promote okay now you 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 have uh, nigerian parents and mm. you, you obviously are born here and you, you know you grew up here and everything so how does that translate to your own you know personally uh, the, the have you the, you know your experiences and things you is kind of what you brought in the yeah the, yeah no, it, was a, it was a mixture of both so we were looking at our, our experiences how we relate to our parents 
but then we was also looking from the adults perspective because the adults also have their own different experiences that is different so we wanted to just fuse the two together mm -hmm. like you know it's almost like a clash of cultures you have one very traditional culture and then you have you know the uk which is more western and putting them together we thought would make the show special okay now um going forward now mm -hmm. like in the next episode and other episodes and things that are coming and mm. then you know other seasons and yeah. you know what what's what is the focus you know is it more elaborate into yeah. africa more of africa than yeah. nigeria or yeah. more you know into nigeria and things like that yeah so it's still going to stay with nigeria because obviously it's a nigerian family but in season two mm -hmm. you see um, auntie Fungay outside the house so now she's she you see her working in a cafe so she's going to be working in like an English cafe. Mm -hmm. So you see the interactions of her at work, the type of comedy and drama that she will, you know, will do working in like an English cafe. How she tries to convert it from being an English cafe to being a Nigerian yeah, cafe. <laughs> so you see a lot of stories with that. Yeah. And then in season three, which we're going to start filming soon, mm. we now move to see the dad in his workplace. Thank you not too much. <laughs> you know, so yeah. so that's how we're going to be doing it. So we're going to be seeing them in their different workplaces. Okay. So I think people will find that interesting. Yeah. No, that you, you you guys created have created something you know fresh mm -hmm. in the African TV, you know, and the audience are really embracing it. Do you mm -hmm. are you having any plans of going into mainstream or mm -hmm. are the mainstream media mm -hmm. TV stations are they getting interested mm -hmm. in the listen? Is there any interest? Um, I mean, when I like when I ask this question to people, is that like you know I I, I find what I'm doing mainstream anyway. Mm -hmm. So the fact is that my market is more in Africa. Yeah. So the fact that I'm able to deal with all the top stations in Africa mm -hmm. is that's where our market is. Market, yeah. So no, so sorry. What what I mean there is this like now you see mm -hmm. like w the lot of um, Western shows, TV mm -hmm. shows that yeah. we also watch. Yeah. You know, in yeah. Nigeria and all that that mm -hmm. has nothing to do with us yeah, as yeah, Africans, yeah, yeah. but we still watch them at least. Yeah. See the especially their sitcoms and yeah, things. Yeah. You know, so so are they? Is it not trans, you know, because I know that there are some other people, white people or other races yeah. and things that also would like to find out what is going on with us and, yeah, you know, yeah. so are, they, are there interests coming? From there is interest, like, I mean, I've, I've been for many uh, meetings with, like, TV stations, production mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. so a lot of people want us to partner okay. and, you know, so we have, at the same time, development deals okay. with, you know, production companies trying to produce some Things, some, yeah. some stuff yeah okay, so what's the difference between like from your experience mm. now what the, in the business point of view what's the difference between tv stations mm. african tv stations and the western tv station what's the difference for you um i think they're, they're very similar that they're very picky to what they want to to buy mm -hmm. the good thing with african stations is that the, the adabanjos relates more so it's easier for them to look at it and mm -hmm. say this is what our audience would like mm -hmm. with the western tv station they want you to work together with them okay. so it's more of a collaboration okay. so they want you to start you know writing on the scripts and working together okay. so, so i feel it takes longer okay so you know they're both good but i feel like the western media it takes a lot longer, longer. To, so know. like um like a, as an independent producer mm -hmm. um you work try you, you're trying to come into the market of the mm. the Western media. Mm. It, it's not going to be like much of independent. Is yeah. That what you're saying? No, no, no. It's just it's just going to take a lot longer. Okay. Yeah. You, you can still you know, yeah, retain you, your no, independence. No, you can still. Yeah, you can okay. still. But it just takes some shows that you see on TV. It took maybe like five or six years. Okay. For them to even make it onto TV. TV. So for someone like myself, I'm. <laughs> I don't have that time. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, yeah. So that's what what I do is on the side. I'm still doing that process with them. Okay. So hopefully, but then the main business to keep things moving, moving is, and is, and focus on your niche. That's okay. it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah that, that's so that's the, it for me as well. So yeah. if you have something to say to upcoming um, producers, let's mm. say um, like myself, mm. you know, what 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 are the things, the core things that you need, you know, they need to know. As a producer, I would say just focus on your niche. You know, like you know, don't be afraid. Don't make your show for everybody. Make it for the niche, and then that will connect with with someone. So as opposed to making it so broad that no one connects with 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 the content. Okay. And also, 
it's good it, it takes time yeah you know so you have to be patient about the journey mm. to where you want to get to yeah well what's your view about um collectively now nigerian um tv mm. movie industry i think it's it's good it's like it's, it's moving very fast mm -hmm. um it's expanding okay you know and people are becoming big stars okay you know i think that we're just at the beginning okay. you know it's growing very fast very rapidly mm. you know every time I go to Lagos there's more and more cinemas being built mm. you know the, the, the budgets the production values are going up and mm. higher so I think because there's so many stories to tell authentic stories and you know when I go to South Africa mm. you'll be surprised in South Africa and the Caribbean people are watching Nollywood movies it's very mm. very popular yeah so yeah, it's getting popular and is you know they have a lot of productions and things but when you look at the, the quality mm. are, are, is it trans is it trans um you know like and this is what where I, I took some time to actually understand the business model I mean in, in Africa the budgets are much less Okay. So, like you know, when you when you compare one to the other, it's very difficult. Okay. So maybe in in, in a Nollywood film, a typical Nollywood film, maybe fifty thousand dollars. For a Hollywood movie, they spend five, six, ten million. So they have time to spend doing all these things. So they spend more time on the sound in a Hollywood movie than the whole budget for a Nollywood movie. So I think when the budget start getting more and more. Um, expensive then you'll see the production values mm. but i've seen a lot of a massive a massive improvement over the last five years yeah, yeah. yeah. but now um like uh, I, I was speaking with some some people like majority of us people we complain that production of things are not very good mm. but we're not holding the big businesses in africa and mm. who are marketing to african mm. markets mm. to sponsor some of these things what do you think what do you think how do you approach these people this yeah uh, you know you have business. to i mean what a lot of people do incorrectly is they don't come with statistics okay so if you want to get big companies to sponsor you have to give them the real statistics how many people are you reaching how many people does the product reach how many people watch your content so once you come to them with, in my experience, once you come to them with all those facts and figures, they will they will give you the money. But if you just come to them with an idea, it's very they'll only give you a small amount of money. But if you tell them that look, this will reach X amount of people, this will that. So it's maybe it's maybe just a factor of marketing their product better. Better. Yeah. Okay, and packaging. Packaging it. Yeah. Okay. Let's say now, if you had to mentor someone who wants to come into production, mm. into you know this kind of TV production would you how, how what kind of blueprint are you going to give the person would you tell would you would you be telling somebody that yes there is a blueprint mm -hmm. to achieving what you want to achieve is there any blueprint um there's two ways like if you want to do it like we did we did it the hard way the hard way is raising the finance yourself you know spending years on building a brand and um having you know supportive investors because that's one thing i would say if your investors are not supportive you know after one years two years like they'll be they'll be chasing you for the money so like you know having supportive investors are very important so you can either do it our way which is quite difficult and you know not many people are in a position to raise hundreds of thousands of pounds mm -hmm. or you can maybe you, you come to a company like ours and then you try and work maybe like as um, an assistant and you work your way you learn the business you learn the business and then from there you're able to work for bigger and bigger different companies You've had it all and um, today I've been speaking with Andrew and you see his journey from school to being a banker to you know now being a, a producer and he has produced a very wonderful TV series that I connect with and I, I, I'm sure that most people are connecting with and she, he's telling an authentic story of Africa which is what we need to hear and we need to see so that we can understand and identify who we are properly and that is amazing so this is what the journey is all about and i'm happy speaking with andrew today and i hope you get something from this interview and keep staying inspired thank you